Hello everybody, welcome back to the MCN. It's a brand new week. No, I haven't had a haircut. You've had a haircut. Imagine if that was true. Imagine if this weekend you've had a haircut and it's just like, you've had a haircut, you have. Yeah. No, I, I have, yes. That's not what this show's about. No, we're certainly not here to discuss haircuts. We're here to talk about Marvel Contest of Champions. So the game that we all play when we swipe and tap. But... What's going on this week? Not a lot. Over the last few days, it's been pretty dire. A few things Kabam haven't responded back to, whether or not they're investigating things, or whether or not they're preparing for a busy week. Mm -hmm. We'll have to find out. Uh, but there's a few things to go over. Two uh, kind of like things to talk about that are kind of mild, which is, it's good to see, number one, a bit of positivity. It's good to see people utilizing uh, the deals. So um, so yeah, it's good to see positivity. Buggy the Clown, um, which, you know, well, I think that's uh, references to One Piece. The Revive and Pop Bundle came in and uh, I got some extra revives. Of course, I've done a video about this and I will be continue to do it because it's so important for free to play players if you're looking to grab this particular deal. Uh, wrong camera, Rich. There we go. <laughs> no, wrong camera again. Oh, oh, it's so difficult having so many buttons for uh, for kind of um, for kind of switching between different scenes of things. This deal right, right here. Uh, it's great having it, right? And it's great having it on a regular rotation. I think Kabam now do a three week rotation basis. I don't want to say it. they've done it since like January time. And of course we're in April right now. So I want to assume this is a consistency. But here's the thing. Kabam are never consistently consistent. They are consistently consistent at being inconsistent when it comes to bugs and issues, but they're not consistently consistent when it comes to consistently putting out the favourite things that you all love. Uh, if that was the case, we'd have Mutant Treasure Island back, uh, and we haven't had a sequel to that in uh, 94 years. So anyway, like, I just want to say, Kabam, keep this up because players are loving it, and as well, yes, it's not revive farming. That I think we can all agree on, but at least it's something that regularly rotates and also players can make a decision to invest their units, either grabbing all of the deals that you could grab of the five you can purchase. Look, long may the positivity continue and it's great to know that players are using it to the benefit to do content, so long may it continue. Next up, an interesting bit of sarcasm. So Sword Deity posted this on, I think it was Friday, saying this player is one of the kindest persons I met in the MCC community. He is a paragon and I am a cavalier, but we both got matched together. He was so nice that he, he first banned my lowest rated champ and I was already happy, but then he chose his lowest rated defender for me to win and didn't even fight me a man. I love this guy. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> this is sarcasm i'm pretty certain it's sarcasm because it's got like a load of kind of like smiley faces and stuff um and it reads as sarcasm because again this is a debatable subject because on the face of it it looks like sandbagging hey what's what's a bit like a bit of a, a touchy subject that's right sandbagging uh, for those that don't know, people that might go into Battlegrounds and go, Oh, do you know what? I'm going to field a load of weak champions. I'm going to look to get the loss. But then go on a, a spate of kind of losing, losing, losing. But maybe losing at a stage of, okay, uh, where are we, for example? I haven't started yet because I haven't got the time. I'm, I'm really busy uh, personally on stuff. I will look probably to start at some point. Uh, but say Platinum, for example. And they're like, okay, well, I need for Platinum 2, I need to get three wins. But what am I going to do is... I'm going to get two losses and maybe th I'm going to get I'm going to get two wins and then do two losses. I'm then going to go back and get two wins and two losses. How am I going to do that, Rich? Well, what I'm going to do is field my strongest team, my super strong team, my absolutely amazingly strongest team that consists of um, the weakest four stars that I probably can get my hands on. Uh, so that gives you a bit of an idea with that one. What does it do? Well, it's more likely that the enemy person's probably wanting to get a win because believe it or not people want to get wins so yes sandbagging uh in order to keep like uh, a place or they're sandbagging at the point of getting some points those particular points could be a lower volume of uh, of points uh, in kind of like farming but it's still a farming of points so you could be like okay great i'm gonna get myself a couple of wins well that's good you could get yourself with some elder marks the ability of uh well i've got myself six thousand seven hundred and fifty points with uh, using those two in the center part there 
But instead, I'll just, you know, complete, uh, com you know, uh, compete in it. And, and I'm going to get 2,250 just for the losses because, hey, I tried. But you didn't try. Uh, you look to sandbag to the po excuse me, point of getting some sort of advantage. Uh, and, like, even... Uh, it's quite quite funny because it's uh, even this uh, is mentioned here by one one nine nine three four five. Santa bagging is still a thing. Now, if anyone doesn't know the the history of Santa bagging, Santa bagging is basically giving out gifts for free uh, to people. That gift being the gift of winning. Uh, but of course, the gift being mainly that the player could be trying to farm. There may be good intentions behind it. There was a thread of giving those good intentions, but also the the cynic. Uh, in a lot of us will go, not sure about that. Maybe it's the case they're trying to uh, to farm points. And of course, then, you know, uh, Captain Rogers, yeah, good point. Uh, it's very nice to you. What did you do? What you did in return? Post his details public and get him banned for farming in battlegrounds. Um, and that's the problem. Like, it's such a debatable subject, isn't it? Like, I could do it. I got no intention to do it, but I could do it if I wanted to. The same way that any player could do it. And the problem is, even though that it's, again, debatable subject, it's still something that with players struggling at times to get to certain points, so instead they go, well, I'm not going to get to Gladiator Circuit. I gave up on my, my dream of getting like Nightcrawler. To be honest, it wasn't a dream. I, it's just a, suck, it's a succubus of time. It is a succubus of time. And I need to best use my time elsewhere in game because there's other things that would make more sense for me to give my time to. You might be thinking, well, you shouldn't do, you shouldn't be like that, Rich. You should try and get in there. Well, unfortunately, it's a lot of the same feeling a lot of playing players in the community have. And if it was the case, it was a different way that players thought about getting to Gladiator Circuit. Then why are the numbers down in Gladiator Circuit? There we go. Look, there's a lot of stuff to Battlegrounds that meets the eye at the moment. Um, whether or not you are pro this or against this. Uh, it may sit with uh, with some people, it may not uh, in any kind of way. Here, for example, is four points on the subject of uh, of points farming as to like well how it's seen to be a problem. Uh, Command doesn't farming for a few reasons. If it doesn't like, I think it's for a few reasons. If you win more using Elder Marks uh, with farming, that means you you use less Elder Marks. The results in spent resulting in spending less units to buy Elder Marks, thereby causing loss of revenue for Kabam. Not saying everyone uses units to buy Elder Marks. That's, okay, that's a good kind of follow-up point. Getting more points faster with the farm farming technique, which results in better rewards for the majority of players instead of the top 10% of player base. Uh, not good for the economy of the game long term. Farming keeps you in a lower tier BG bracket, thereby uh, where you face against smaller accounts, thus screwing over the smaller accounts and uh, create more comp uh, complaint posts uh, in the form of not good morale building and uh, takes away the spirit of the competition. Playing uh, to lose wasn't part of their idea when they invented the game mode, even though smaller accounts will suffer a higher losing percentage when they reach Vibranium since they are facing way bigger accounts but this is the other side of things like we don't know 100 percent that these players are playing for the well, not in that sense that's a good example of them you know losing but the problem is bottlenecks the vibranium bottleneck is a very real thing that players experience so not everybody experiences it but it is a thing it's made worse when there's something that's behind say uh getting to uh gladiator circuit that uh, victory track don't really see but I do see when it comes to the bottleneck in that vibranium uh, area and it's been a problem for a while. But what are your thoughts on the subject of this? It Does it take away from the competition? Have you had enough of Kabam when it comes to like helping out the progression of players? Are you thinking that Kabam should be more strict when it comes to this? Um, you know, banning people, which I think they might have done some banning in the past. But what are your thoughts? Put it in the comments. Next up, but an interesting article that's doing the rounds about Kabam and Marvel Contest of Champions. So this was put out on Game Developer. I'll put a link in the description if you want to give it a read because we're just going to be covering some of the key points because we're going to go over to the article that it originates from, which is the Flexion article. So the there are a bit, I'd say, a little bit misleading things when it comes to titles of this one, and we've got to dig a little deeper just to give you a bit more facts. So this 
title says Kamam is taking Marvel Contest of Champions to alternate uh, alternative app stores. Ahead of its 10th birthday, Marvel Contest Marvel Mobile Fighting Game is leaving iOS Android Playground to hang out in other app stores. Of course, that reads a little bit scary, uh, but it's not entirely uh, the case. We do need to kind of like give a bit more context to this. Again, I'll put the link in the description to the Flexion article. This comes from Flexion Games. The title being that Flexion and Kabam team up to bring Marvel Contest to Champions to alternative, alternative apps. Of course, the main message from this is we are excited to partner with Flexion to bring Marvel Contest to Champions to even more players, says um, Xiang Wen Li, uh, the CEO of Kabam, the real CEO, not the people that say CEO in their titles and go, D -d 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 you know, uh, in MCOC. Expertise, experience, and technology make them the ideal partner for us to collaborate. For this collaboration will help us reach new audience to make uh, making Marvel Contest of Champions available on even more app stores. This is especially exciting ahead of the game's upcoming 10 year anniversary. The main thing from that seems like from the previous article, like scare tactics, like, oh, you know, we, it's going away from iOS and Android. Uh, it's not as expanding. I think one thing that we've definitely learned over the last year is that Kabam will be doing more when it comes to the web store. They've been doing more when it comes to trying to take themselves away from iOS and Android and Google and Apple being this kind of monopoly and look again as I said before in the past previous videos if you don't like the success that Kabam have had a Marvel Contest Champions from a monetary aspect then look that's 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 that but when it comes to other game developers smaller game developers who are trying to earn money and also keep their games running keep people employed it is so important that they take back that level of control that Android Android, Google and uh, uh, Google aren't as bad, but Apple, you know, take away that. If you've been keeping up with the Fortnite and Epic game saga, you'll know exactly how this is uh, in, in being so important for games development and as well games developers being in control of uh, the monetization and stuff. Could this be something that people don't won't like down the line? More than likely, um, but it's such a difficult thing for business because hey. Greedy companies are in the world. You consume them on a daily basis. We're all, we're all funny, aren't we? <laughs> anyway, uh, we're delighted to partner with Kabam, one of the world's leading game developers, to bring their hit game to more players around the globe. Says that person from Flexion. This partnership is a win for Kabam and the App Store. So which. Uh, which we will uh, connect to drive audience engagement. Uh, to give you a bit of an idea as well, this will be going, sorry this is, looks like minute on screen, but I need to get it into shot and it's quite difficult to kind of uh, do that without it kind of like compromising on size, but I will bring you into these particular points right here. In that, the game is now going to be expanding to Amazon App Stores, Samsung Galaxy Store, AppDoid, and One Store Korea starting on April 29th. So that will be in what? Like that'll be next week, uh, the final kind of days of um, of April. So that's exciting to uh, to see that. I think this again is uh, is important to. I don't know if you heard that. There's a train just went. Anyway, um, I'm getting heckled by a train. Anyway, um, look, it's important to to expand this for the community. Like. I don't know if people understand. This game needs a thriving community. I'm not saying we don't have it, but it's a case of expansion. Where other games have done great to kind of like expand the communities into other sectors. Um, MCOC has been very stagnated in what they've done. They've only recently gone on to Twitch, and that's been an important element to show that there's the community can build out of that. And of course, community growth in, is important to then bring more people in new people on different apps that they use uh, but also um, you know retain them retention of community people that go away from the game are they going to come back some people do but they come back years down the line so there's lots of kind of like important things there but expanding into new markets new territories that could allow kabam to uh, to get their game thriving and expanding is so darn important for the future of the game and Look, it's a bit too. It's, I'm not saying it's too late, but it's it's later in the day. The games is later in the day, but later in the games running uh, to do that. But um, happy days with uh, with that. I think that's going to be good. As I said, could lead to pain points, but in the meantime, um, it's this is um, 
I think it's good news for the community that we'll probably get uh, you know more people uh, coming to the game. I don't think there's any more to it, but I think that's really it. Um, you know, there's it's it's a case we'll go straight to um, well, later on. Sorry, we'll go to the Samsung Gaming Hub, One Store Global, and DT Games Hub. So maybe that's the, the problem. People weren't getting involved with uh, the game because they weren't able to access iOS and Android or didn't like accessing them for whatever reason. But we'll see what happens. Like, could this expand the community? Great. Looking forward to it. Let's do arena results for Morbius and Kingpin. So what are we looking at with arena results? We've got Morbius uh, position 115 going for 30 mil, position 220, 25.8. But the most important uh, position 382, no, is that 20? 20? 20.9 20 mil. So yes, there's a uh, yeah, little bit a uh, little bit of movement there on that one. 5 mil is enough to kind of like split the places by over 100. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, it gives us a bit of an idea of what we can predict for round two. Kingpin. On the other hand, uh, we're looking at position 114, 55 mil, going down the ranks right there. We're looking at 222, 46.5, going down to uh, 302, very important position, 42 mil. It's likely my predictions for round one got it, but uh, yeah, difficult one. Round two predictions though, I'll go with 41 mil to be safe for six star Kingpin, 30 mil for five star uh, Kingpin, 22 mil for six star Morbius. Especially with how things kind of went with the uh, the arena itself, but you might be able to get away with a, a sneaky twenty point, maybe maybe twenty one mil, and uh, fifteen mil for the five star Morbius. Good luck in the round two of that arena, and also make sure to check out some other content located on the screen. Uh, we should hopefully have a bit more of an active week this week, but we'll see. Appreciate it for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.